Welcome. My name is Kevin Millison. I am the IXR DXR Modality Manager for Philips Multivendor Services. Today on this webinar, we are going to talk about basic X-ray, C-arms and portables. Plus, we have Dale Lehman from All Parts Medical Technical Support Group to talk about an exclusive remote tech support program called REACTS. So now, let's go to the outline. Within this webinar, we are going to talk about the history and fundamentals of X-ray, and then we'll talk about where do you find general X-ray in use, the type of general X-ray equipment, what are the components that make up a basic X-ray machine. We'll be talking about the introduction to portables and C-arms. We'll look at the major components that make up a portable and C-arm and some of their common failures. And then we'll conclude with Dale Lehman from All Parts Technical Support talking about Reacts Mobile. On November 8, 1895, a physicist named Wilhelm Conrad Rankin discovered by accident X ray when experimenting with a cathode ray generator. He found that this new ray or radiation would penetrate all types of matter. He used his wife to create the first X-ray image of her hand. Rankin called this newfound radiation X, which stands for unknown, but we know it as X-ray. In 1903, William Coolidge invented the first X-ray glass tube. The problem was people were dying from this new X-ray. But in 1920, they found that if you could safely use X-ray, if you use the following steps, time, distance, and shielding, limit the time in the field, limit how far you are from the source, and use lead shielding. All light and radio waves belong to the electromagnetic spectrum. Microwave and infrared bands are longer than visible light, but UV and X-ray and gamma rays are short wavelengths. It was found that, the, that a crystal could bend the X-ray the same as light through a gradient. It was also found that X-rays are capable of penetrating some thicknesses of matter. Medical X-rays are produced by letting a stream of electrons to come into a sudden stop at a metal plate known as an anode. Images produced by X-rays are due to the different absorption rates in the different tissues and bone. The calcium in bone will absorb most of the x-rays and on the image it looks very white whereas fat and soft tissues absorb less which make them look gray air absorbs the least and looks black so where do we find x-ray in use we find it in hospitals clinics mobile providers which are trailers. We find it in the following departments, emergency rooms, urgent care. There is diagnostic or treatment or pathological imaging. What type of, what type of x-ray units are there? There's analog and digital. An analog system needs film or CR, which is computed radiology to create an image. Digital systems uses a digital plate to create an image. There's treatment departments, which treat to, um, cancer cells, which is radiation oncology. Uh, diagnostic, which is used for 
looking at structures in and on the body. Uh, we have RAD departments. We have lab, RAD floral departments, uh, mammography, and bone densitometry. General x-rays used for diagnostically looking at soft and solid objects within the body, such as a chest image. Uh, they might be looking for uh, pneumonia or cracked ribs, or they look at uh, kidneys uh, by the way of using uh, a liquid called contrast, which makes the vessels within the kidneys uh, turn dark. R and F or floral uh, systems are used to um, create moving images, such as if you want to look at um, blood flow through a, a, a vessel or um, uh, doing a, what they call upper or lower GI, where they look at the intestines. Um, this is done again by using this. Uh, liquid called contrast, which makes the whatever it goes through turn dark so that you can see it. Um, but the thing about an RNF room is you can do both rad uh, images and moving floral images. Treatment equipment are used to eradicate cancer. Uh, they are very po high powered. Um, they can output either a high dose or a low dose, depending on whether they want to penetrate deeply within the body or just uh, on the skin. Um, they use a uh, precision multi-leaf collimator, which um, after putting in a CT scan of the area of interest, uh, they create a um, uh, plan which um, makes those collimators create the shape of that um, lesion and they only radiate that portion and not just completely blast the body. So the pathology equipment is used to image um, samples that they take from uh, uh, supposed cancerous areas um, what it does, it gives them an image that they can determine whether it is cancerous or not. Uh, this device can either be in a surgical suite, it could be in pathology in the lab, um, and it could be portable too. What are the components that make up a basic X-ray unit? You have to have these basic components and every manufacturer has to have them somewhere within their system. You have to have a mains, which is the incoming power from the hospital. Uh, that it goes through a voltage compensator. Uh, this device uh, uh, usually is a transformer and holds the voltage on the other side uh, steady. As we know, our power is not what it, they say it is. Uh, some kind of voltmeter to make sure that that power is correct. Uh, we have to have an exposure timer. Um, we, in x-ray, we turn the x-ray on for a period of uh, milliseconds and we turn it off. Well, this circuit is what does that. Um, pulse duration, um, that circuit is a circuit that sets up uh, the duty cycle on the um, high voltage rectifier. Um, it uh, determines how much power we're gonna output. We have to have a KV selector. KV is what we use to penetrate into the body. From there, we have to have a high voltage transformer. We have to take uh, whatever our incoming power is and boost it up to over 10,000 volts to feed the high voltage rectifier. The high voltage rectifier then um, sets up the duty cycle 
And what I mean by that is, is uh, if you look at a sine wave, it's uh, how many times it turns on and off, which determines the amount of power is outputted. Uh, MA meter, uh, we have to have one of those so that we know uh, how much uh, electrons we're going to uh, send out. And we have to have an x-ray tube. Uh, What's around that x-ray tube, we got to have a filament control. Um, the filaments are like a light bulb. Uh, they're little uh, coil filaments that create this electron cloud that we need to send downstream to the um, metal plate called the anode uh, to create the x-ray. So we have to have something that would control that so we can control the output. Um, we have to have thermal overload protection because 80% of the power that is generated is in the form of heat, creates heat. So we don't want to burn up our x-ray tube, so we have to have some kind of circuitry that will shut that down. Um, and then we have to have a rotor control, which um, there's a motor that's hooked up to an anode in there and it rotates. And that beam that comes off of those filaments is uh, can burn through that metal if it isn't rotating. So these are the basic components that are necessary in an X-ray machine. Every x-ray system has a control panel. On the control panel, we need the means to control KV, MA, and time. Also on the control panel, you will find pre-programmed um, selections. So the uh, techn technologists can just press a button and have it set up to take a chest uh, x-ray on the chest band. We also have exposure buttons on the control panel. There's displays that display the KV, MA, and time um, and other relevant uh, information. Uh, they, will, they may also uh, display error messages. Every extra unit needs a generator. The generator creates the high voltage, which is around 10,000 volts, which is supplied to the x-ray tube to create the x-ray output. Uh, the generator is controlled by the generator console, which we talked about on the previous slide. Um, different manufacturers, such as GE, they have their standard JEDI generator, which you'll find in probably 95% of all of the equipment they manufacture that generate x-ray from CT to basic x-ray to RNF to um, cath lab. Uh, Siemens, uh, as shown here, this is an IT generator. Um, this is used in Maltex uh, M systems. Uh, Citical. Uh, Citical is used in multiple um, lower end um, units. Uh, they are very stable. Uh, you will find these in the um, like uh, diagnostic type x-ray units uh, in a uh, doctor's office. So also the CPI is found uh, in the doctor's office. This particular one in that uh, is viewed here is actually from a RAD Pro uh, manufactured by Picker. Within the generator, there's that high voltage transformer assembly. Internal to it, there is diodes, capacitors, and um, inductors to take the low voltage and uh, boost it up to the voltage necessary for the x-ray tube. Uh, some tubes um, on, let's say, a 
rad flow room. Uh, that system has a, an overhead tube and a table tube. And the same transformer then supplies power to whatever the selected tube is. And in order to do that, they have uh, uh, switches to switch the uh, filaments and also the switch the high voltage cables uh, so that only the selected tube um, gets the energy. The rotor control board supplies power to the stator, which is a motor in the x-ray tube. The stator turns the anode. In some systems, there is two speed rotors. The higher the KV, the faster the rotor turns to keep the electron beam from burning a track or pitting the anode as seen on this slide. The heater or filament control board supplies low current power to the filaments in the x-ray tube. The filaments then create an electron beam by thermonic emissions. This electron beam is then pulled to the positively charged anode, which then strikes the anode surface and breaks up into 20% x-ray and 80% heat. The x-ray tube comprises of two sections which are enclosed in either a glass or a metal enclosure filled with a dielectric oil that is used for cooling and isolation. The negative section of the x-ray tube is called the cathode. The cathode houses the filaments. The second is the positive side or anode side. It houses the stator, the rotor, and the anode. Now that we have created our x-ray beam, we need a device that will uh, shape the size of that x-ray beam to the uh, subject or surface that we want to x-ray. That is done by what is called a collimator. Within the collimator, there is metal barriers or blades that on that we can bring in on all four sides to make a different size of field. Uh, there's also uh, uh, diaphragm types where it's round. We can squeeze those down to a certain size. But how we know what size of x-ray we have is done by the calibration of a field light to x-ray field. This way we know that we see the light on the surface, that is where our x-ray beam is. We need a way of turning the x-ray beam on and off fairly quickly. So there is a circuit within the x-ray machine called the AEC or automatic exposure control. This is comprised of a, a control circuit, an ion chamber, which then the ion chamber reads how much x-ray has hit it. And at a certain point that we set up on our control, it turns the x-ray off. Now that we have an x-ray beam, we need to start putting components in place that will give us some kind of an image. One of those types of components is called an in image intensifier or short II. These devices take x-ray photons from the patient and turn it into a photoelectron, which then is uh, uh, moved up through the II via coils to a fluorescent screen, which and then glows uh, a visible light. And, it, and on that side, we attach a camera, which then sends a signal to a monitor. There are very many different types and manufacturers of cameras out on the market today. We had in the past glass cameras, 
but those today are um, no longer found in the market. What you will find is the CCD camera, which is similar to the camera on a cell phone. Pictured here, I have two different versions of cameras that all parts uh, uh, sells. We have the sales um, camera that is on a P500. Uh, this camera also can be found on many Siemens uh, RNF rooms. Um, there's also the OEC 98 camera. These cameras take light and turn them into electrical signal that can then be sent to a monitor or some kind of storage device. The second device that we see on the market today is called a detector. The detector takes X-ray beam and turns it into an electrical signal. Within the detector, there is a crystal that glows similar to a uh, uh, the phosphoric um, screen on a uh, II, which then is picked up by um, some photoelectronics. There is two different types out there in the market. We have a fixed detector. What's shown here is the detector from a uh, GE Definium 8000, or we have a couple different types of portable detectors. They either can have a cable attached or they are wireless. The X-ray tube is mounted to some kind of tube support, whether it be a floor mounted tube support, a ceiling mounted tube support, or a U-arm, which is used uh, for stretcher work. Now that we have our x-ray tube mounted to a to a tube stand, we need to have a device to keep the patient lined up with the x-ray beam. There are different components. One of them is like the U-arm, um, which has the detector attached at one end and the x-ray tube at the other. Or we have a standard table where the patient lays flat on the table and the table head can either have four ways floating or it can raise up and down. We could have a multi-purpose uh, uh, table, which can be used for multiple different uh, procedures. And then there's the wall stand, which is used to do checks X-ray. Within many of the positioners, there's a device called a Bucky. The Bucky was originally used to um, mount uh, a cassette with x-ray film in it. But in today's system, the Bucky is being used to uh, correctly position a digital detector under the patient or behind the patient. Now that we have our digital image, we need something to view that image on. So in the market, we got multiple different manufacturers who make uh, monitors. There's general purpose monitors, such as a, a computer monitor. And then there's the diagnostic grade monitors, which are used by the doctors to uh, create treatment plans. You will also find in the cath lab, a large 70 inch monitor, which you can display multiple images on. Now that we know about all of the components that are necessary to make up an x-ray machine, let's talk about portable x-ray and C-arms. Where are portable x-ray and mobile C-arms used? They're used in the emergency room. They're used in surgical suites. They're used in patient rooms. Also, you will find them in clinics, outpatients, you find them in orthopedic and endoscopy and pain management departments. What are they used for? They're used for emergency urgent care, orthopedics, cardiology, and angiography. 
listed here, I have two units, the OEC 9900 and the GE AMX4. All Parts Medical has a very large selection of parts ready for shipping on these two systems. There are many different types of manufacturers of C-arms on the market today. The C-arms that I have listed here, All Parts carries parts and training for each one of these. The OrthoScan FD and Hologic Insight FD are used for extremity work, such as imaging of the hand or elbows. The Siemens Seos Fusion, OEC 9900, and the OEC Elite CFD are used in multiple different departments, such as the cardiac department, the pain management department, ortho department, and you might find them even in the ER. There are two different imaging systems within the C-arms today. You either have a system with an II, which is the 9900, or you have a flat panel imaging system, which is has a digital detector, like in the Siemens CEOs systems. In the C arm, such as this OEC 9900, you have a generator, you have an x ray tube, you have a collimator, you have an uh, image intensifier, and you also have a CCD camera, all to create the image. A lot of these systems uh, come with different size C arms, some of them are motorized where the C-arm actually is, uh, has several motors uh, to do 3D work. Most of the C-arm systems out there has a workstation trolley monitor cart assembly uh, within their system. Um, this uh, usually uh, provides power distribution, video processing and display. Uh, they have external uh, connections uh, to go out to other monitors or other like um, uh, storage devices. You could have hard copy, which uh, uh, most of the hard copy are paper this day. And also there's um, um, ethernet to send DICOM images out to PACs. With OEC, all parts uh, carries many parts uh, that are associated with the system. We have intensifiers, we have CCD cameras, hand controls, foot controls. Uh, we have x-ray tubes in stock. Uh, we can get you battery packs. We can get you wireless DICOM uh, components, dual monitors, um, replacement. Uh, the remote control interface, and we also have a good selection of new interconnect or umbilical cord cables. Some of the common failures that you will find within a C-arm system is uh, diminished dose output, uh, which is usually uh, one or two things. It's either a bad uh, low battery, bad x-ray tube, um, we have weak or discharged battery packs. We have damaged uh, high voltage cable assemblies. We have communication failures, uh, bad low voltage power supplies, uh, broken interconnect or umbilical cords, cables. We have poor image quality. We can have a bad x-ray tube, not enough power coming out. Uh, we have bad uh, processing in a uh, work station. Our IIs could be weak. Um, we have lack of DICOM communications. 
uh, which usually is the uh, you know motherboard within the um, workstation. System won't boot. Possibly bad BIOS settings or a dead coin battery. KV and MA ramps to max. Well, the system can't see any X-ray, so there's probably a broken video cable, or we have a lack of high voltage to the X-ray tube. Now let's talk about portable X-ray units. They're very high. There's a very high install base out there. They're very reliable. Uh, some of the major OEMs are GE, Philips, Shimatsu, Siemens, Canon, and uh, Samsung. On this slide, I have listed the systems that we have parts and training for at all parts. There's the AMX 4 Plus, the AMX 700, the CareStream Revolution, the Siemens Mira Max, and Shimatsu Mobile Dart. Some of the common parts that you or components you will find inside of a uh, portable x-ray machine, you have an operator's console, you'll have battery packs or capacitor banks, you have battery charging circuits, of course, an x-ray tube. Uh, you must have a collimator. You have to have an x-ray tank, x-ray cables. And then because it is a portable system, we need some drive system, which is comprised of motors, wheels, and control handles. So in the portable x-ray, uh, realm, you have two types of systems out there in the market. You have an analog system, which is just a standard analog system that uh, used to be used with film or with uh, CR plates, have been now upgraded to digital uh, via a third party upgrade, which included a external monitor, uh, uh, imaging computer, and a wire or wireless detector. Uh, listed here, I've got two manufacturers, uh, the CareStream DRX and the Konica Aero DR. On the other hand, you have the manufactured digital portable systems, which have built-in imaging computers, and they have um, digital det wireless detectors. Um, such as the Shimatsu Dart Evolution, the GE Optima XR220 or 240, and the Siemens Mira Max. Here are some of the common failures you might find in a portable X-ray unit. Bad batteries, they become resistive. Most battery packs only last about four years. Bad charging circuits. Drive motor errors. Bad drive control boards. Drive motors, brushes. Bad handle controllers. Generator errors. Again, bad batteries. Most of the problems with KV uh, usually end up being bad batteries, batteries not able to uh, uh, provide enough power, bad x-ray tube, bad rotor controllers, bad CPUs, bad cables. The other things that happen are detectors being dropped, an artifact filling up, batteries not um, good. Please give all parts a call. We have all of these components in stock ready for shipping. We also provide technical support and we have training on a lot of different pieces of equipment. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dale Lehman, our technical support engineer, who is going to be talking about a wonderful program called Reacts, which will cut down your repair time.
Welcome to the REACTS part of the presentation. My name is Dale Lehman. I'm with All Parts Technical Support Services. REACTS stands for Remote Education, Augmented Communication, Training, and Supervision. All Parts is proud to introduce REACTS. REACTS incorporates innovative tools like augmented reality, sharing files, pointers, overlays, and other things that can help us help you diagnose your problem. REACTS is a communication platform designed for the healthcare industry. Its creators build it to be HIPAA compliant and secure enough to support telemedicine remote education, and technical support. Phillips has acquired REACTS and has been in long-term partnerships to integrate their technology. We at All Parts are launching the app-based communication tool to improve our customer support. Why REACTS versus other video communication? If a compliant. It complies with security and privacy laws and regulations, protects the patient data and head headless servers. Reacts also allows us to freeze images, use pointer tools, share content, images, documents, and desktop, overlay live videos onto a frozen image. Reacts is a secured video communication. Reacts can be accessed in three different ways. Windows desktop application, a web-based application, or a mobile application that can be downloaded on your Google Play or Apple App Store. When do you use Reacts? When you need assistance troubleshooting, it's like having another FSC there on site with you. If I have multiple parts or high cost parts that I need a second opinion on. There are two ways to create account, reactively or proactively. It takes about 15 minutes to set up your account. To set up your account, Log into www.reacts.com and set up your account on your web desktop. Set up a username, which will be your email address and a password, something easy you can remember. You can sign up on Reacts using your phone. After you once sign up with your address and password, you will receive an email to confirm your account. This is an example of an email sent to you when you are added. This is a demonstration using Reacts to use the pointer to show the FSC where to go to and where to look for his problem. This is a display of an overlay that we're capable of doing. This is an actual count where we're working with an FSE with the components on the left and the block diagram on the right, showing the flow of the signals. You can actually get tutorials on the Reacts page. You get following one Reacts web mobile video session. We'll show you how to access the web and mobile device. You also have different interfaces with video and also shown different capabilities of Reacts.
Thank you for your time. If you have any questions about REACTS, feel free to contact us at All Parts Medical, 866-507-4793. Thank you.